Hey everyone, Mitch coming in from the Commander's Core Studio. Welcome to the show. So on today's episode, I've got an Omega level commander for you. Now what exactly is an Omega level commander? Well, it is one that well is incredibly powerful and also a massive threat. And yeah, this is one that is making waves already in Commander. And it hasn't been that long since it's been out. Here we go. Ariet, Ariety, whatever the name is. I can never get the name right, but I know the power level of it because Ariety of the Charmed Apple. Yeah. Omega level. 2 for human warlock for one white and a black. Each creature that's enchanted by an aura you control can attack you or planeswalkers you control. On top of that, though, beginning of your end step, each opponent loses X life and you gain X life for X number of auras you control. Yeah, this commander is making a massive impact already. Very well might be the most popular commander from this set. We shall see how that all turns out. But um, yeah, this is a crazy, crazy good commander. One that says essentially, utilize auras now in a different way. Utilize or essentially say, hey, I'm going to put them on your opponent's creatures. And uh, all of a sudden, yeah, you can still use those creatures. Most likely depending on what the aura is. But you're going to be going that way or that way or that way. You're not going to be coming at me. And also, uh, while this is happening, I'm just going to be draining you ever so slightly uh, and taking you out in that way. So yeah, utilize auras in an exciting new way. Essentially say, they're not goaded, but they're not coming at me. So yeah, if you want to use your creatures, you better use them elsewhere. And then also get drained. So yeah, a crazy good commander. One that lets you utilize some crazy jank cards. Absolutely love it. If you are interested in this commander, make sure you check out that deck. Let's link in the description below. It's a very budget-friendly deck. Outside of the commander, every single card in this deck is 50 cents or less. So incredibly budget-friendly. The total for the deck is just $19.48 according to Moxfield. And again, that includes a commander that's like over $4. So there you go. The rest of the deck incredibly budget-friendly. Keep in mind, this does not include the cost of shipping or basic lands. But you might have some buddies that can give you some lands. Or maybe your LGS has some extras. Or, you know, maybe you can just buy them in bulk. Or, yeah, just there you go. So yeah, a crazy good commander and uh yeah i'm excited to talk about the tactics so with all that said let's jump into it so let's start things off with tech number one adventure time and of course first up there's wayfarers bob will pay two tap sacrifice go get a base land into play tapped yeah fantastic mana ramp for any 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 color combination land ramp i mean anyways moving on ever flowing chalice a great flexible mana rock basically for each mana you put into it each two mana you put into it you get one mana back out of it so early in the game sure turn two tap for one later much much more moving on charcoal diamond enters the battlefield tap taps for a black and uh yeah a great efficient mana rock but we also have marble diamond which is basically the exact same thing but in white so another great efficient mana rock then we've got felwar stone this one even more efficient can utilize it right away tap at one may have any color land opponent controls could produce so usually we'll have each of our colors with this then we've got knight of the white orchid a creature that can help us out two two first strike human knight for white white again our opponents can help us out with this too enters the battlefield opponent controls more lands than us we can search our life for a planes goes around the battlefield then we shuffle so that can be absolutely fantastic for us then there's mind stone tap right color so we can pay one tap sacrifice to draw a card to replace this there's or's ob signet can help us filter our mana pay one into it tap taps for our guild's colors then there's systematic land can help us filter our mana as well tap for a colors or pay one and tap to actually filter to whatever color we need then finally talisman of hierarchy this will get tap for a colors or tap for either of our colors but it deals one damage to us but one damage is absolutely no big deal at all But now let's move on to tactic number two, good deal, because um, we can make our cards cost even less, absolutely. We've got so many ores in this deck, let's make them cost next to nothing, essentially. So we've got Hero of Iroas, a 2-2 human soldier for one and a white. Aura spells you cast cost, wants to cast. Also, if we target this, we get plus plus one counters on it. That's nice. More importantly, though, again, that cost reduction can be huge. So we've got ramp, of course, but also that cost reduction can help us cast spell after spell after spell on a turn, which can be massive. Next up, Killian Ink Duelist. This one can do so much work for us. 2-2 two, two with lifelink and menace. And spells you cast to target a creature cost duelist to cast. And of course, that includes auras. So reduce that cost by two is huge. Transcendent Envoy. This won't reduce as much. Still a very effective one, though. One, two, Flying Griffin. Aura spells you cast cost one is to cast this being an enchantment in itself as well, which is nice. Then there's Dantha Caption paragon a 2 2 with first strike vigilance and lifelink so yeah that's a lot of text also or equipment spells you cast ghost wants to cast the most important piece for us there then there's starnheim courser this one actually can help out with our enchantment creatures too flying 2 2 artifact enchantment spells you cast ghost wants to cast obviously help with our artifacts as well is massive as well just absolutely huge it can help us mana rocks and also with our auras as well next up defiler of flesh this thing can be huge as well helping out with the non-generic part of the mana cost 4-4 for phyrexian with menace for four mana additional cost to cast black permanent spells you can pay two life 
Those spells cost black less to cast for each pay your life you paid this way. This effect reduces the only amount of black mana you pay. Whenever you cast a black permanent spell, target creature control is plus one gains menace on turn. So that's nice, helping a creature potentially get through. But again, most importantly, yes, yeah, spend some life to essentially take care of those black mana pips. Oh yeah, we can cast auras for basically free with this in combination with other mana reducers as well. Absolutely huge. Then there's the Filer of Faith, very similar, but instead of it being black, it is going to be in white. So you're going to be paying that two life for that white pip essentially and then also on top of that whenever you cast a white permanent spell you get a one one white soldier creature token so that can be well an army for you in absolutely no time with a card like this but yeah again paying life is no big deal at all especially with a commander that can gain us an absurd amount of life when we're draining our opponents but let's move on to attack number three bring it back we've got some auras that well we can bring back Griffith's Moon is a fantastic one in aura for a single white man enchant creature, plus one was zero and flying. So yeah, we can encourage our opponent to get through that creature, right? Hey, look, I'll equip it to your creature. Uh, it's not going to come through at me because it can't attack me, but you can attack my other opponents, which is great, and get through on them. On top of that, pay three and a white, return from your grave with the battlefield, attach to our creature, activate only time because a sorcery. That's fine. Again, a repeatable aura for us that is absolutely massive. Speaking of which, Nurgle's Rot. Chain creature no controls, no problem at all. That's what we want to do. When a chain creature dies, return Nurgle's Rot to its owner's hand, and you create a 1-3 black demon creature token named Plague Breaker of Nurgle. Yeah, uh, a fantastic card for this kind of a deck. Again, a repeatable one that can also just give us, you know, creature tokens as well. A repeatable aura can be absolutely massive. Next up, Brilliant Halo. Chain creature gets plus one, plus two. Put a grave from play, you return to its owner's hand. So again, when that creature is eventually dealt with, you know, with a wrath effect or whatnot, all of a sudden we get this back so we can just put on the next unlucky creature. Speaking of which, Conviction. Enchanted creature gets plus one plus three. I'll pay a white mana to return this back to its owner's hand. This can really take advantage of any kind of, hey, when you cast an enchantment spell, those things can be absolutely huge with a card like this. On top of that, again, hey, if that creature is going to get dealt with, pay a single white mana, bring it back to your hand, recast it onto something else. Speaking of which, Despondency. Enchanted creature gets minus two minus zero. It's going to grab from play. You return it back to its owner's hand. So again, essentially, hey, yeah, let's slightly make that creature not as good. And then also, yeah, when that creature's dealt with, come back to my hand so I can get it back in play, add to my aura account, which is massive. Or in a free way, how about Dragon Scales? A great card. Chain creature gets plus one plus two, and attacking this cause a tap. So vigilance, essentially. Whenever a creature with converted mana cost six or greater comes into play, you can return it from your graveyard to play and chaining that creature. This doesn't just count your own creatures, actually. This can count your opponent's creatures as well. So if they have something big coming to play this in your graveyard, you can freely get this out and attach it to one of their creatures. Again, getting free auras into play is huge. Make it so that creature can attack you or your planeswalkers. And also, hey, drain your opponents. And also, speaking of which, Dragon Shadow. This one might be even better. Plus one with zero and fear. And again, that exact same converted mana cost requirement. So, hey... Again, if a big creature comes into play, let's make that slightly bigger and also make it so it's essentially unblockable against many players. So yeah, have fun attacking my opponents with uh, this giant creature. Next up, we've got Morning. One in a black, chain creature minus two minus zero, and then also pay a black, return it back to its owner's hand. So again, another way to take advantage of those enchantress spell triggers, essentially, and a way to say, hey, that creature's gonna get dealt with, let's bring it back so we can recast it. Skyblades, boon, enchant creature, plus plus one flying, pay two and a white, return it to its owner's hand, activate only with it's in the battlefield or in your graveyard. So actually we can get this back out of our graveyard if we need to, so we can replay it. Then we've got cessation, Chain creature can't attack. So if there's just a really scary thing on the board that we're like, you know what? If they ever deal with my commander, I don't want that thing going at me. We can just make it so that, that can attack. And also when this from the grave from play, we turn it back to its owner's hand. So again, we got a way to just use it again. Then there's fallen ideal. Enchant creature has flying and sacrifice creatures. Creature has plus one plus or probably plus two plus one to line of turn. When it's a grave from play, bring it back to its owner's hand. So again, if they want to sacrifice creatures to it, great. Uh maybe don't give this the aristocrat style player, but still a great card in many situations. Speaking of which, screams within a crazy good card. Chant creature gets minus one plus one. When chant creatures from the grave from play, return it from your graveyard to play. So this one just is essentially a perpetual aura that stays in play, just attaching from creature to creature to creature, and essentially saying, Yeah, I'm just gonna stick around, help, you know, my uh my my owner essentially drain my opponents and just yeah make it so that uh, nah, creatures can't attack you then we've got shackles another great one as well chain creatures on tap against towards on tap set this can be really brutal especially against commanders that might have activated abilities that have taps in them essentially pay white mana return to its owner's hand a great way again to say yeah let's just take advantage of those enchanter style effects as well and then finally sleepers guile a great one too chain creature can be blocked by artifact creatures and black creatures essentially fear grave from play back to your hand so again yet another way to say hey even if that creature's dealt with i get my aura back and be able to use it again and again.
But let's move on to tactic number four, Blockhead, because, um, yeah, again, those creatures can block still if they're enchanted. They can't attack us, but we got some ways to maybe throw a wrench into that, too. Clawing Torment is a great card. An enchantment or for a single black man enchant artifact or creature. Clawing Enchant Permanent is a creature gets minus one, one, and can't block. Enchant Permanent has the beginning of your upkeep, lose one life. So this punishes that opponent even further and makes it so that creature cannot block and yeah, can't block our creatures as well. Next up, Crippling Blight. Minus one, minus one, can't block. Again, another way to say, yeah, you know what? You can't attack me. And also, I'm coming through on you as well. Then there's Demotion. Chain creature can't block its activated abilities can't be activated so again a great way to shut down especially commanders that have activated abilities maybe there's even decks built around those activated abilities and all of a sudden just shut down completely and also yeah you can't block on coming through there's gale of shackles yet again chain creature can't block and its activated can't be activated you can also pay a snow mana we're not going to do that what we care about again is essentially hey you're not coming at me you're gonna go with someone else and also you can't block me and you can't activate your abilities then there's sinister possession you can actually you know attack or block but there's a price for that as well enchant creature for a single black mana whenever it attacks or blocks the controller loses two life so there's a price to be paid there then there's spectral grasp this one says you know what actually sure you can attack still even my commander is not in play but you still can't attack me. Can't attack your planes as you control and train a creature. Can't block creatures you control. So go and still block your opponent's creatures, just not yours at all. Finally, Visions of Brutality. Chain creature and chain creature can't block. And whenever chain creature deals damage, its controller loses that much life. This can be absolutely brutal, absolutely effective. And again, yet another way to get through in your opponent and punish them further. But now let's quickly move on to tactic number five, Quick Trip, because yeah, we've got some cantrips that are quite quick in that they help us replace themselves right away. Angelic gives us a great one in aura for two mana. Chain creature, when this enters the battlefield, draw a card, and chain creature's flying. So basically a way to help it get through on your opponents, because again, they're not coming at us, they come at our opponents though. And also, yeah, let's replace that, let's draw a card. Speaking of which, chosen by Heliod, again, two mana, and chain creature, enters the battlefield, draw a card, that's fantastic. Also, you know, we're helping you out. Hey, plus zero, plus two. You're welcome. You know what? You can't say I didn't do anything to help you out, all right? And finally, we've got Scourge Mark, again, helping out, right? ETBs draw a card again for two mana plus one was zero to that creature. Hey, let's uh, have it hit harder. It's gonna hit our opponents. Let's have it hit harder as well on top of it drawing into that card. But now let's move on to tactic number six, Value Town, because my goodness, there's some high value plays that we can use in a deck like this. First up, Viscopa Guild Mage, an amazing one. Two, two, human wizard. Pay one white black. Target creature gains lifelink until on turn. That's nice, but more importantly, one white black. Whenever you gain life this turn, each opponent loses that much life. This is basically like, hey, all that pain that I'm going to cause you by having my auras in play and getting my end step and draining you, let's double that up again. Usually it'd just be gain X, lose X, essentially, where X number auras in play. Now it's like gain x and they lose twice x essentially so yeah if you've got 10 auras in play all of a sudden they're losing 20 and that can add up really really quickly next up a giant shows you speaking of, of adding up let's add the number of cats in play let's get more and more cats in play what's on to love about that chant and then enters the battle for your control you create two two white cat creature token if that enchantment is an aura you may attach it to that token so yeah we can get auras in play and attached yeah, probably not going to do that we're just going to get more and more two twos in play though with the more and more well, ores that we have entering the battlefield. Next up, Archon of Sun's Grace. Pegasus Creature Control of Lifelink. How is that relevant? Well, it is because whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, you get a 2-2 white Pegasus Creature with Flying. Again, you got so many ways to get enchantments, to get ores into play again and again and again. This can give us a massive army of flyers out of nowhere. Next up, Sanguine Bond. I cannot believe this card is budget-friendly. Again, enchantment for five mana. Whenever you gain life, target opponent loses that much life. Yeah, again, yet another way to say, hey, um, let's just double up the pain, at least on just one opponent, essentially, from all that life gain that we're going to be getting, saying, yeah, you know what? Yeah, you're going to be alive still, but now you're gone, because you're going to gain all that life. And then finally, Sigil Empty Throne. You can really take all players out with this one. Enchantment for five mana. Whenever you cast enchantment spell, you get a 4-4 white instant control with flying. So again, you're making so your opponents can't attack you. And you're saying, hey, you know what? I'm going to make a massive army in no time out of some flying angels. Maybe I even have some ways to make your creatures not block, right? And then just get through on you and take you all out and put you all out of your misery. Now, as good as all these cards are, there's one, in my opinion, that stands well the rest, and that is the Golden Pig of this deck, which is Warlock Class, a single black mana for an enchantment class. At the beginning of your end step, if a creature died this turn, you're going to lose one life, so that's nice. The second level, though, is when it becomes level two. The top three cards your library, put one in your hand, the rest of them are in your graveyard. That's nice. Level three, though, most importantly, at the beginning of your end step, each opponent loses life, your life they lost this turn. Massive. Again, a way to double up that pain for your opponents, and one that is pretty hard to deal with, again, being an enchantment. Keep this in play. Again, punish your opponents for creatures dying 
punish your opponents for, well, you draw extra cards, I guess. <laughs> it's not really punish your opponents, but mostly punish your opponents for them losing life by, um, yeah, either you coming through with them in combat or, yeah, just draining them and essentially saying, yeah, I'm going to gain all this life for these orbs being in play. I'm going to drain you even further, basically twice as much of the orbs in play. This just doubles up your commander's effectiveness of taking your opponents out. This is an absolutely cool card and, yeah, definitely, in my opinion, the golden pig of this deck. But now let's move on to tech number eight. I dig it because we need to dig down into some of the good cards to actually go get more good cards. So Hateful Edeline is a great one. A one, two, Spirit with Life that costs a single black mana. Whenever enchant creature dies, draw a card for each aura you control that was attached to it. That includes our opponent's creatures as well, of course. So again, get those auras on their creatures. Even when they're taken out, you get extra value by replacing those cards by drawing more and more. Speaking of that, Dawn of Hope. Whenever you gain life, you may pay two if you do draw a card. You can also make some 1-1 one, one Soldier with Lifelink. That's nice. Again, basically at your end step, hey, you want to pay two? Cool. Do so. Draw a card. Then there's Lord Skitter's Blessing. Enters the battle for connect. Wicked Roll. Token attached to our creature control. We gave your draw step. You control enchant creature. You lose one life. Draw an initial card. So yeah. Very, very easy for you to ensure that you have at least one enchanted creature. Next up, Shram. Oh my goodness. 2-2. Two, two. Dwarf Advisor. Whenever you cast an aura equipment or vehicle spell, draw a card. We've got so many auras and so many we're going to cast and recast again and again and again. Draw a ton of cards thanks to this. Next up, Lurus of the Dream Danny. 3-2 Cat Nightmare with Lifelink. During each of your turns, you may cast one permanent spell converting that cost to a lesser graveyard. We've got a ton of low to the ground auras. Let's cast them again out of our graveyard. Mace Enchantress. Yep. An enchantress. What's not to love about that? In an enchantress style deck. Whenever you cast a chance, I'll draw a card. So draw an absurd amount of cards throughout the game. Thanks to this. We've got Ashiok's Reaper. Whatever enchantment you control with a graveyard from the battlefield, draw a card. Again, this is going to be happening a lot throughout the game. We get a ton of auras into play. Those creatures get dealt with. They go to the graveyard. We get those auras back. And now we also get to draw a ton of cards with that. Also, take advantage of the auras that are in play with Sage's Revere. Enchant creature enters the battlefield. Draw a card for each or you control its attached to a creature. Also, on top of that, the enchant creature gets plus one for each or you control its attached to a creature. So, make one creature massive. But more importantly, yeah, basically draw a card for every single one of your auras in play. Absolutely crazy. Then there's Well Lost Dreams. Let's gain a ton of life. Again, gain a certain amount of life based on the auras that we have in play. When we do so, we can pay X life, or X is less than or equal to the amount of life that we gain. When we do so, we draw X cards. Basically, go to your end step, draw an absurd amount of cards. Finally, speaking of that, Decree of Pain, a good panic button for us. Draw creatures that can't be regenerated. Draw a card for each creature destroyed this way. Or we can cycle away if we need to. Yeah, just a great panic button to say, let's just reset things and draw an absurd amount of cards. But now let's move on to tag number nine. Goodbye. Because, yeah, we've got a ton of ways to already throw into our opponent's lands, which we talked about with, like, all those auras. But also, hey, we've got even more ways, like some great removal spells like D-Spark. Exile target permanent mana value four or greater. Next up, Generous Gift. Destroy any permanent. They get a 3-3. Cool. We get yet another creature in play that we can attach an aura to. That's lovely. Next up, Crush Contraband. Choose one or both. We're probably going to choose both. Exile and Artifact. Exile Enchantment. Yeah, a great amount of value there. So we get a Cleansing Nova. If we're desperate, yeah, we can destroy all Artifacts and Enchantments. But most likely to destroy all creatures. Whatever you need for the situation that you're in, utilize that effect. And then finally, Doom Wake Giant. My goodness, a one-sided board wipe on a body. Whenever it or other enchantment enters the battlefield under control, creature spawn control, minus one, minus one until I'm turned. We're going to have a ton of enchantments enter the battlefield, a ton of auras enter the battlefield, take out your opponent's creatures again and again and again, keep their side clear, or at least keep their side clear of all the small ones. You keep the bigger ones in play with those and auras on them as well. Yeah, a really good card in this kind of a deck. But now this episode is coming to a close. It's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts are on this stack. And if you are interested in it, again, it's a very budget-friendly deck. Make sure you check out that deck list link in the description below. And of course, as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all of their support.